So the Chicago Bulls lose to the New Orleans Pelicans 123 to 111 in a game that showed all of the mistakes the Bulls could make in a game. This is the team we expected to have. One that was not cohesive on the offensive end and one that did not talk on the defensive end. Billy Donovan is going to have a great year of not making adjustments and letting us see how bad we can be while we go for one of those top 10 draft picks. We're going to talk a little bit about Zach Levine having a great first half as well as how he just completely disappeared in the second. Io and Lonzo looking amazing on the floor. Kobe White having shooting troubles. Patrick Williams looking like he shouldn't even be on the Bulls anymore. And one of the biggest mistakes the Bulls have been making Honestly, maybe for the last two or three years. We're talking about all that and more, but first, you got to hear the intro. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. My name is Quentin. I'm your host. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. And I know you guys are going to have just as much to say as I am. So make sure you comment in real time while you watch this video so I can hear your takes on this game and what you think the season will be like for the Chicago Bulls. But with that, let's get into it. The Chicago Bulls started this game out with not a lot of energy. They usually don't have energy when they start games, but they started to pick it up and look like maybe they were going to make a good run, right? They stayed very close for the first half. We saw some things we liked. We saw Zach have a great game. At the beginning, we saw the team starting to try to move the ball, off-ball movement, but all of that fell and crumbled once halftime happened. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the two people who deserve some praise this game. Io DeSumo and Lonzo Ball looked good, right? And that's sad to say that one of the only people who looked good on our team is the player who hasn't played in two years. But... The, Lonzo Ball just looked like he knew what he was doing. You can tell this offense is different when he's on the floor. Ayodesumu was getting to the rim. He's become an amazing finisher, and he was not settling to just take three-point shots. He was going and attacking over and over again, which is something you want to see from him, but also just from the Bulls in general. The two of them made watching this game somewhat okay. Now, after they stopped doing the things they were doing, it just became a dumpster fire, right? We're also going to talk about Zach Levine. Zach Levine started out with them playing well. Zach Levine at the beginning of this first half looked like he looked like prime number one score all-star Zach Levine, okay? He looked like he was making a message to the league. This is what you get. If you trade for me, the way Zach was playing in that first half, you probably could have traded him after this game for a first overall pick, maybe another star. He looked like an absolute beast on the court, hitting threes, pulling up with people in his face. But he did all of that while doing a lot of his shots within the offense. Right, He was playing within the flow of what the Bulls were trying to do. And what we've seen in the preseason and at the beginning of this game is that is when Zach is at his best. When he's playing through the team. Don't just force things up. If you have an open shot, great. If you are the only option left and you have a little bit of time on the shot clock, then you can force up a shot. And by doing that, that is when he soars. But that hit a little break. Okay, At one point, Zach shot a... I think I'm hot, heat check shot, and from then on out, Zach Levine became the old Zach Levine. Forcing up shots he didn't need to take. In the corner, not passing the ball to people who are open just so he can take a contested three-point shot for no apparent reason. Just driving to the lane, losing the ball, throwing it in the air, throwing it out of bounds, taking bad shots, taking bad throws, not moving without the ball, not playing good defense. I don't know what happened. That heat check missing was probably the worst thing that could have happened to Zach Levine this entire game. He looked like absolute dog shit the second half of this game, right? Now, 
The sad part is somebody was worse than Zach Levine the second half. And that's Patrick Williams, who basically looked like he didn't even show up to this game. He was on the court, but he didn't really do anything to help us whatsoever. If anything, he probably helped, you know, New Orleans more than he helped us because Pat just didn't look good. Looked absolutely bad. And this is something that we continue to see over and over and over from Pat. Every year in the offseason, we're ready for him to do good. And every year, he plays bad. And we just got to accept that. We have to accept that maybe Patrick Williams is a 17th to 18th pick. And we just drafted him way too high. And now our expectations for him are that of someone who he's just not supposed to be. Right? So, Patrick Williams, terrible. Zach Levine, terrible. There's still someone who played worse than those two. Kobe White. (laughs) And that hurts me to say, because Kobe is still my favorite player on the Chicago Bulls. He's my favorite player on the team. But Kobe could not shoot the side of a giant brick house if he was told that he would get shot in the face if he didn't. He could not hit anything. And he started to drive towards the end of the game, but the issue was he waited too long to start doing that which is something the Bulls do a lot, actually. If you're not hitting your shots, you got to find another way. And Kobe just was looking like old Kobe. There was a lot of people looking like them old selves today. You can see it when Kobe missed shots or he made mistakes. You can see him acting like a child, being down on himself. And he tends to do that. And once he tends to do that, he starts to play bad because he's not playing to have fun. He's in his head. He's trying to do too much. That's what happens with this team. Try to do too much. Play the game. You have a lot of scorers. You have a lot of people who can put the ball in the hoop. A lot of people who can move. A lot of athletes. But for some reason, we think that you have to do it all. That needs to be It needs to be better. It needs But he also needs to understand when he's not shooting to attack the rim at a faster pace. His first two shots he missed, he should immediately start attacking the rim. That should have been the immediate thought process for him. Attack the rim, get going, get some easy shots, get to the free throw line, and then start trying to shoot threes. But hey, who am I? Now, moving on for that, another reason we lost this game, and I will talk a little bit about the New Orleans Pelicans before I get into this point. The Pelicans played good. They played great defense. They played great team ball. They fought when there was 50-50 balls. They really got down on the ground. And part of that is, one, they care. Two, they're an actual playoff team. And three, they have the one person us Bulls fans miss, Javante Green. Javante Green, I know you will never see this video, but we miss you. You are One of the Chicago people that we wish we could never give up. You and Alex Caruso will be one of those people that for the next 20 years, people go, damn, what if we would have kept him? So, Javante Green played great. He did what he does. He was energy off the bench, playing, dunking, getting around, getting steals, getting turnovers, doing everything you need that the Bulls don't get anymore. All right? And that takes me into the last thing that really caused us to lose this game. And the thing that's been an issue for the last few years The Bulls don't know how to find Vooch. They just don't. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're actively trying to not pass him the ball. But at this point, I'm starting to feel like Vooch. I'm I'm okay with him not being happy. I'm okay with him being pissed off. There's so many times where Vooch is wide open and we're just, oh, okay, cool. We're going to take a three. Oh, Vooch got a 5-4 person on him. Take a shot. It's cool. We don't need it. Vooch plays angry. Because the team acts like Vooch isn't Vooch, right? We keep saying Vooch isn't the same Vooch that he was when he was with Orlando. Well, you know what? When he was on Orlando, people thought he could post up and pass him the damn ball. The Bulls don't want him to be a post player. They want him to be a pick and roll driver and three-point shooter. And for some reason, Billy Donovan hasn't realized that in practice, he needs to stop them and say, hey, give the ball to your big man. Teams do it to us all the time. Brendan Ingram ate this game with just posting up Zach Levine and Kobe White and having them throw him the ball. You know why? Because New Orleans is a smart team. They see a mismatch, they attack it. Most good teams in the NBA, they see their big man on a small guard, 
they pass them the ball. The Bulls don't know what that means, and that's going to hurt. Not only is it going to hurt us with offense, it's going to hurt with Vooch hating to be on this team, wanting to be out because no one uses him the way he should be used. It's also going to help with spacing, not going to help with spacing because we don't play in and out because Vooch doesn't touch the ball. So now he's just clogging up the paint, trying to get a post up, and we don't do anything but try to drive into it because that's what we do as a team. We need to find what smart moves to make as an offense. And this is mostly the players. I can see Vooch is actively trying to post up and people aren't passing him the ball. But this is also a Billy Donovan issue. Billy, Billy Donovan, as the coach, needs to stop practice every time they miss him and be like, hey, you have a center that can do this. Give him the ball. They won't do that. And that's why we will continue to see Vooch not play well and continue to see Vooch get more and more pissed off. And I guarantee you, after the first two weeks of the season, he stops running up and down the court. He stops giving a shit. And we see the same Vooch we've seen the last two years. The I don't really give a shit. I just want to go home, Vooch. This is the Bulls. Now, mind you, I say a lot of this. It's a long rant. There's going to be rant videos this year. The Bulls are going to suck. There's going to be a lot of these videos. If you like ranting, let me know. Tune in. But that doesn't mean we expected them to be great. I still expect the Bulls to be terrible, so it's fine. I'm not super mad because they're terrible. I am disappointed in some things that I thought even a bad team can do well. But the big thing is that the Bulls are the Bulls. We're going to have a lot of these games going forward the rest of the season. You guys are going to hear a lot of me being angry about things. But the goal is we all know, hopefully, it's all worth it when we see our top 10 draft pick because the Bulls maybe might not win those 30 games we talked about if they keep playing like this. With all that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's going to be more each and every time we're going through this year. This is the year where I'm going to be pushing heavy on the channel. So make sure you hit a follow so we can get to a thousand subscribers. I'm going to be trying to co-host. So if you also know a Bulls channel that you love to watch, go ahead and message them and tell them to have me on so I can get there and show what we're about here. Y'all have a great night. I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you for watching. 